Welcome to the second session on cost of capital. In this session, we are going to look at uh, the cost of profit stock. We're going to calculate the cost of common stock equity and convert into the cost of retained earnings. And also we're going to look at the weighted average cost of capital um, and discuss alternative weighting schemes as well. Let's begin. The preferred stocks gives preferred stockholders the right to receive their stated dividends before the firm can distribute any earnings to common stockholders. So it's a hybrid security between debt and equity. It has certain um, characteristics that, that uh, attract towards the debt side and um, um, the others towards the equity side. So preferred stock dividends may be stated as a dollar amount. It also can be in the percentage rate and uh, the percentage will be at the, uh, with respect to the stock's power or face value and equals the annual dividend. So the cost of preferred stock is the ratio of the preferred stock dividend to the firm's net proceeds from the sales of preferred stocks. So algebraically, we can write it as DP over NP. So DP is the stock dividend. And the net proceeds that actually receive against this, uh, against the sales of preferred stock is NP. And RP is the cost of preferred stock. Let's look at an example. DC is contemplating the issue, issuance of a 10% preferred stock that they expect to sell for $87 per share. So if you look at the, um, uh, the formula, it is the preferred stock, cost of preferred stock equals to dividend by net proceed. And for the dividend, we have the $87 multiplied by 10% gives us the dividend of $8.7 per share. Then the cost of issuing and selling this stock is expected to be $5. These are the flotation cost and they has to be deducted from the uh, face value of the um, or expected sale for the $87. So it has to be deducted from the $87 minus $5 that gives us $82. And now if we substitute these values, we'll get uh, the $8.7 divided by $82. And this gives us the value of 10.6%. Uh, 10.6% is the cost of preferred stock. Now let's look at the cost of common stock. The cost of common stock is the required return on the stock by the investors in the marketplace. It could be in two forms, retained earnings or new issue of common stocks. So the cost of common stock RS is the rate at which the investor discount the expected dividend of the firm to determine its share value. This sounds much more like dividend discount model. And we can see that the constant growth valuation model is perfectly uh, uh, perfectly works for calculating the cost of common stock. Since it assumes that the value of a share of a stock equals the present value of all future dividends that is expected to provide over an infinite time horizon. Uh, and if you, uh, if we can write it, it is P naught price of the stock at time zero equals to dividend over RS minus G. Now, this is the uh, Gordon dividend discount model or constant growth valuation model. Um, to calculate the price of the stock or any of the unknowns. We can see that um, if we can calculate for RS, it will be, for if, if, if we are interested in calculating cost of common stock, then we must calculate the RS, which is equal to D1 over P0 plus G. So this equation actually indicates that the cost of common stock equity can be, uh, uh, can be found. If we have the dividend, we have the price, and we also know the growth rate of the stock. Now let's do an example. DC wishes to determine its cost of common stock equity RS, the market price P0 and of its common stock. And this is actually $50 per share. The firm expects to pay a dividend D1 of $4 at the end of the coming year 2016. The dividend paid on the outstanding stocks over the past six years were as follows. And this is given as in the table. So let's put chart down the formula, which is RS equals to D1 over P0 plus G dividend D1 
is four dollars so this is four dollars divided by p naught is fifty dollars it's here fifty dollars and this is the four dollars and then we have plus the growth rate uh, growth rate is we can calculate it from here by using the uh, method that we already did which is future value divided by present value 1 over n minus 1 and this will gives us the uh, growth rate and this growth rate will be uh, 2.3.8 uh, dollars divided by 2.97 dollars and we 1 over 5 because this is from here to here 1 2 3 4 and 5 this is the fifth uh, year and this comes out to be equals to 5.05 percent so if you use 5.05 percent here we will get the idea which is 13 or approximately 13.0 uh, 13.0 percent So after the cost of uh, um, capital uh, calculated through um, constant growth model, we can also use other methods, for instance, capital asset pricing model. Uh, if you recall, uh, the capital asset pricing model can be written as RS equals to the risk-free rate uh, plus the uh, risk, which is beta or B, and multiply by the excess return, which is return on market minus the risk-free return. So we have the excess returns and this is the um, non-diversifiable risk factor non-diversifiable risk which is basically uh, the market compensate us uh, for investing in a stock for the risk which is non-diversifiable which is diversifiable that is not being compensated by the market so let's do an example DC now wishes to calculate its cost of common stock equity RS by using the capital asset pricing model and since we know it is RS RF plus B RM minus RF so we just plug in all these uh, values the firm's investment advisor and its own analysts indicate that the risk-free rate is 7% plus the firm's beta equals 1.5 times the excess return which is 11% uh, this is 11% is the risk market return minus the risk fee which is 7% that gives us the RS and RS equals to uh, with this it, it will give us the value which is 13% same as constant growth model however it is not necessary that the both agree so theoretically they both make a uh, similar sense in practice or in empirical solutions the answer would be different and there is for reason for that will be seen in a few moment so the capm techniques differs from constant growth valuation model in that it directly considers the firm's risk as a reflect as reflected by beta in determine required return constant growth model does not look at the risk However, it uses the price as a reflection of the expected risk return preference of stock. So price comes from the, the demand and supply. The demand and supply dictates what will be the price. Hence, the risk from the demand and supply transfers to price. And then the constant growth valuation model and CAPM techniques for finding RS are theoretically equivalent, though in practice estimates from the two methods do not always agree. Why? Because the common stock and uh, the dividend discount model has a price factor, while CAPM does not have price factor. So if you look at the two example, uh, two equations, the uh, dividend discount model, which is also Gordon dividend discount model, has price equals to uh, the dividend divided by RS minus G. So we have a price factor here from which we can reduce, uh, we can charge the flotation costs and create a net proceeds. However, in capital asset pricing model, we have the equation as RS equals to uh, risk-free plus beta risk of the market minus RF. And we, you, you, you can't find the price here. So it's difficult to incorporate the flotation cost in CAPM.
what is the cost of retained earnings? Now, the cost of retained earnings is the same as the cost of an equivalent fully subscribed issue of additional common stock. In, in essence, it is the same RS as calculated from the um, um, dividend discount model or constant with the constant growth. Or it can be from through the capital asset pricing model. So this RS represents the same value for retained earnings, what dividend discount model, what CAPM will calculate or give it to you. And it's essence equal to 13% we already calculated for both. A new cost of a, the cost of a new issue of a common stock, RN, is the cost of common stock net of underpricing and associated flotation cost. Underpricing is if I am selling, uh, I intend to sell a stock for $100. However, it, the market buys it at $90. So this 10% is the underpricing. And this is a cost to the company that we have to um, bear. Now, new shares are underpriced if the stock is sold at a price below its current market price. We can use the constant growth valuation model expression for the cost of existing common stock RS as a starting point. So if we let N uh, represents the net proceed from the sale of new common stock. So after subtracting underpricing and flotation cost, the cost of the new issue RN can be expressed as follows, which, which will be, uh, uh, so uh, rather than starting from P0, I can start with RS, and this is dividend one over uh, P0 plus growth. And instead of P0, I can actually, I can actually use the NN, which is the net, which is the net proceeds from the sale of the new common stock after subtracting underpricing and flotation cost. So basically, NN is the P0 minus the flotation costs. The net proceed from sale of new common stocks and then will be less than the current market price. Obviously, it's uh, the flotation cost has reduced the amount. Therefore, the cost of new issue RN will always be greater than the cost of existing issues RS, which is equal to the cost of retained earnings RR. The cost of new common stock is normally greater than any other long term financing cost. And partly because it's not um, tax deductible. Uh, the dividend is also not tax deductible. So, DC common stock is currently selling at $50 per share. And uh, to determine the its cost of new common stock RN, DC has estimated that on average new shares can be sold for $47. The $3 per share underpricing is due to the competitive nature of the market and a second cost associated with the new issues flotation cost, which is $2.5 per share that would be paid to issue and sell the new shares. So the total underpricing and flotation cost per share are therefore $5.5. So this is both if you 3 plus 2.5 add it, it will give you $5.5. So let's calculate the RN, which is $4. And the amount is 47 minus 5.50 dollars so 47 was the uh, can be sold for 47 dollars however we have to reduce it uh, because of the underpricing and the flotation cost which equals to 5.5 dollars and then we have to uh, add the growth uh, uh, rate which is 5 percent this is not given in the question. However, you can take it uh, and write it as such. It's five percent is the growth rate that comes out to be uh, total is nine percent plus five percent, and that equals to fourteen percent. Let's combine all the costs and calculate the weighted average cost of capital, which is also called VAC. VAC is represented by RA, and it reflects the expected average future cost of capital over the long run. It is found by weighting the cost of each specific type of capital by its proportion in the firm's capital structure. So in essence, it is the RA equals to WI multiplied by the RI. This is the cost of debt, long-term debt. Then we weight the preferred stock. 
this is the cost of preferred stocks in the capital structure and then finally we bring the common stock or the retained earnings into uh, the weighted average cost of capital so it is ws multiplied by the r r if it's retained earning we are going to use r r or if it's um, the new capital issued we'll use r n uh, also please remember that uh, this um, weights uh, all the weights have to sum to one so in this case we have uh, the wi plus wp plus ws should equals to one so you have to look at three important points um, one is uh, uh, to convert the weights into decimal and leave the individual costs in percentage terms also weights must not be non-negative and it should be summed to one which means all the costs has to be uh, a part of this equation and finally the firm's common stock equity ws is multiplied by either the cost of retained earnings or the cost of new stocks uh, cost of new common stock now, which cost is used depend on whether the firm's common stock equity will be financed using retained earnings or new common stocks let's look at this example uh, the dc has following cost 5.6 is the cost of debt 10.6 is the cost of preferred stock and then we have cost of retained earnings 13% and cost of new common stock is 14%. This is the weight composition in the capital structure. 40% is debt, 10% is preferred stock and 50% is common stock. This table gives us a clear view of how it is used. Long term debt is 40% which is multiplied by the cost and this is the weighted cost that you get is 2.2%. Preferred stock is 0.1 and uh, gives us the um, uh, the weighted cost of 1.1 and common stocks gives us the weighted cost of 6.5 the cost if you see weight equals to 1 if you sum all of them and the weighted cost which is the sum of all of these is 9.8 percent this is the this is also called WAC 9.8 percent now there are other weighting schemes as well in this uh, in, in using WAC now book value weights and market value weights book value weights are va weights that use accounting values to measure the proportion of each type of capital in the fi firm's financial structure while market value weights are weights that use market values to measure the proportion of each type of capital in the firm's financial structure uh, so we have the hist historical versus target as well and this historical versus target is historical weights are either book or market value weights based on actual capital structure proportion uh, and target weights are which we intend to achieve in future so this is desired capital structure proportions from a strictly theoretical point of view the preferred weighting scheme is uh, uh, target market value proportions what we desire the capital structure uh, proportion should be that's what we should be used However, it is very difficult also to come up with the target uh, weights. So what we have learned in this session, we have looked at cost of preferred stock, calculated it. We have also looked at uh, cost of common stock equity and uh, calculated it, converted into cost of retail earning as well, and also looked at the cost of new issues of common stocks. We have um, uh, done this through um, dividend discount model with constant growth and also we have looked at the capital asset pricing model and all the differences and um, challenges that uh, they face. Um, finally we have looked at the weighted average cost of capital and discussed the alternative weighting schemes such as book value versus market value and also historical versus target um, proportions. Well, this is all for now thank you